What's up, homies? Welcome to the brand new show here on Heroes Reforged, where we're talking about the comic book series Invincible. We're so happy that you're here. We have a lot to discuss. So let's go ahead and explain what the heck this show is. This is gonna be a weekly show where we are covering a volume of Invincible, the series. But we're talking about volume one, Family Matters, today on the show. Family Matters, of course, named after the sitcom, the beloved sitcom we all grew up with and many of the volumes are named after classic sitcoms, but we're covering a volume per week. We're also planning to do some extra bonus stuff at some point for our community. Stay tuned for that, it's very exciting. I don't wanna to tease too much, but at one point, Invincible, which is a comic book series from Image Comics and Skybound, Invincible does cross over and meet Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe, and we're gonna read that comic, and it's one of my favorites of all time. It's so good. So, this is a series that, just to give you guys a little bit of background information, I have read before, Augustine has read before, but Adam has never read. We're bringing him on this journey. And I just wanna sort of pick Augustine's brain a little bit about how he feels about the series overall and to kind of try to explain why we're even doing this show. Augustine. So when I first heard of this uh, comic book, Hector, when you first mentioned it, I, I wasn't super deep into any other comics outside of Marvel and DC. And there was something about the way you would talk about it that was just like, oh, this sounds a little bit interesting. Like, I feel like I need to get into this. Uh, and then I saw some of the taglines that said, oh, the greatest comic book in the universe or whatever it says, right? Well, we'll they have it advertised in the comic book, so you'll see it. Um, but I got to a certain point in which I started reading it and plowing through it, and I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest comic book I've ever read. It's the best comic book. Um, and uh, we, we will go into dive deep into why I feel like that's absolutely true. And Adam, I hope you feel the same way when you get to those points. Um, I really like this initial dive in first because we get to kind of know the universe and, and it kind of sets the tone for everything. And you're like, okay, I guess I can see it. And then all of a sudden it's just like, boom, you're done. You're hooked. It's going to happen. It sets up and breaks normal comic book tropes. Uh, it sets up and breaks normal. Any, anything that you thought a normal comic book was, this one will like, it will revere it and then make fun of it in the same joke. So it's really cool. Um, it, there, there's a lot of really clever stuff and I really can't wait to explore this with you, the audience, and with Adam as well because it's gonna be, oh, we're in for a ride. If you're watching this right now and you're like, look, I haven't read the first volume of Invincible. Can I keep watching it? Is it gonna spoil it? I'd say go ahead and keep watching it. It is okay for you to get this first part spoiled because it's not really the meat of the series and it's not indicative of what the whole series is, kind of like we're saying. If you wanna read along with us, there's a couple things you can do. First, there's a bunch of links in the description for different ways to read it. There is the paperback, there's the hardcover, there's also compendiums and complete libraries that give you even more story in a huge thick boy collection. Then there's also, you can just read it digitally, it's on Comixology and Adam, even was telling us that if you have Comixology Unlimited, you can just borrow it for free, that first volume. So you can try it out and Comixology Unlimited also lets you try it a bunch of other stuff that they have at that level of the service and it's a really great deal to kind of try things out. So the last thing I'll say too is in the description for this video, there is the link for the Discord. If I didn't already mention, join the Discord and if you're reading along with us, you can discuss with us and our community every single week, uh, every volume of this book and it's gonna be dope and it's gonna be exciting. I just wanna jump into this, okay? The show's coming out next year, the animated series. It promises to be very close to this comic, and I want to get the first impression right out the gate. Adam, you've never read this before. <laughs> How are you feeling, man? Hit us with it. Be honest, hit us with it. I think the thing that I really, really liked about this comic book was the fact that it wasted no time getting into the story. And I think traditionally, we're sort of used to comic books doing a lot of setup. That's not to say that this doesn't have setup. It's got plenty of setup, but it doesn't waste time spending pages and pages and pages and issue after issue really telling you the origin story of particular characters, particular moments. It gives you just enough for you to understand the context of the world, the context of the characters and the family, and then it just jumps right into the story. I mean, you literally are thrown in the first page. It does a little bit of a Tarantino where you see the end, and then you go back and you see the beginning of how everything unfolds. And that was actually pretty refreshing. I really, really enjoyed that. And knowing almost nothing about Mark Grayson or his family, I didn't realize how little I needed, how much little context I actually needed to just enjoy the story. The story starts, you're in it, 
you meet all the characters that are important to that first volume, those first four issues. It was just very enjoyable and fun. I loved the humor. I loved the action. I loved the artwork. And I loved the tone that it has this high school Smallville-esque type of feeling. But in moments, in certain moments, it's also very adult. And then other moments, particularly with Mark Grayson and his dad, it's got some really funny moments. With the mom as well, the subtleties and the humor I thought were written so well. And it just felt very human and it kind of felt like everyday life of parents going to work and then coming home and you know, mom being thankful that she at least gets to spend dinner with her, with her family and relationships and friendships. I just loved how quickly he was able to just kind of go into that. And at no point in the four issues in the first volume itself did I feel lost. I have a lot of questions, but I know that there are questions that will be expanded upon in later issues. What are some, what are some questions? What are some questions? What are some, hit us with some questions. I mean, some of the big questions for sure is, you know, Mark Grayson's father, the origin, his alien origin. I wanna know more. I wanna know why he looks like a human. I wanna know why Earth, why, you know, we got little tidbits of why he was so determined to come to Earth. Adam, there, I can tell you now there's nothing behind that at all. He's just a good guy. He's just a good guy. <laughs> really? Superman it up. No. He's just the best. <laughs> no the intentions best. whatsoever. I think that's what I really enjoyed. I like the fact that it mirrored Superman's journey to Earth, but I have no doubt that there will be twists and turns and that it will flip it on its head. And I think that's what's exciting is like, cool. I didn't come into this wanting to read a Superman comic book, but I want to see how it uses those tropes and those ideas and flips it around and makes it unique and interesting. And I think we're going to get a lot of that. That's really cool. One thing that I also like about this first intro is how nonchalantly they would tr they treat uh, issues that would be major moments in other comic books where they're just like, no, I, you, I, there was a chemical fire. Yeah. He just went away and like I love that seconds, part you know? so much. Or like he was in Thailand or where was he fighting a dragon somewhere? It, I and he think was gone in, for just like a couple days. China or Japan, but then he yeah. comes back, he goes, oh, there was like a flood in Thailand that I had to yeah, hit on exactly. the way so to I had dinner. I love how the mom was yeah, like, I hope, exactly. he, I hope he brings him back a nice gift. We've never been there before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just love how it's just like, yeah, this is what he does. This is his thing. Like this is, this is everything. Um, I also really like the setup with all the other characters they bring in with Robot and Adam and Rexplode and everybody. Um, and I like that you come in not necessarily trusting everybody because you 100%. know that they're the super squad, right? <laughs> so he already kind of sets up this kind of like, I know when I first started reading this, I would look at Robot and I'm like, Robot, you're up to something. You sneaky mm. robot. I know you're up to something mm. um, because just the way he's drawn, like he's drawn in a way where you can't tell what's going on behind the robot face. I um, just want to say this real quick. We we promise not to sort of talk about the upcoming animated show too much. It, they're separate entities and I want to get Adam's take on this book as it stands by itself. I want to revisit this as its own piece of art with Augustine. I have to mention this. The voice of Robot is going to be Zachary Quinto. And it's kind of perfect. Oh. Because this, because Quinto can do a very lovable, emotionless Spock. But he can do uh, the villain he played on Heroes. He he can do Sailor. like, in, like She's lovable, but also not saying Robot is in either camp. I'm just saying for those moments where you go, what's going on with this guy? Yeah, because they start off and I right he's just always been edgy for me and I just I don't know whether to trust robot at this point. Yeah. Uh because he just comes in and he is legitimately just a robot trying to get his job done, you know, trying to <laughs> defeat villains. Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I really like how they really ease you into uh, Mark's relatability uh, as a as a high schooler. Um, with all his friends and like mm -hmm. his his top his top priority right now in his life is his friends mm -hmm. and well actually his newly found super abilities with this cool new suit and yeah uh, and everything else um i also like that we get introduced to a couple of villains um like mainstay villains that will that we will see or not see in the future mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. particularly i like the mauler twins which are pretty cool um but the main baddie right right now is i guess the uh teacher who's blowing people up and stealing kids, which is pretty gnarly. Yeah. Uh, and it sets up some tension between him and, you know, his members of his super squad, which, you know, are potentially his other friends in high school, uh, which is also really cool. So it's a, to me, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a really good intro to a, a bigger, more complex universe. How did you um, feel, Augustine, like you're rereading it with how much knowledge you have? Because I was kind of also, 
having to like re-remember like, oh yeah, I remembered we knew so little about right. such, such, and such. Yes. What was it like for you to revisit these first four issues, yeah. knowing what happens later in the series, knowing what we know about the characters, and and um, and did you have to almost unlearn some like how did it work for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Well, it's more it's more unlearning because by the time you get to where I am in the comic books, specifically Mark has gone through so many things. He's learned and grown so much that looking back on this is almost like looking back at my yearbook, like looking back at where I'm just like, oh, that's cute. Like, oh, you don't even know what's gonna happen. Uh, and so it's it's good to see that. Um, there are also mainstays of this character that are common throughout. Like every character, it's crazy to think, but every character that was written was already solid in these first four issues. Uh, and, and they continue being solid throughout, but just continue to develop and grow like, like normal people and normal characters would expect to do. So it's really freaking cool. And I, I know I know we're kind of teasing you, Adam, but this is, this is you're in for a hey, ride, my friend. Let me tell you, the way Adam was talking about this first volume, mm -hmm. he's going to love this comic book, dude. <laughs> it's it's going love it. It's going I to mean, break his brain later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, when we were introduced to the teen team, I knew from the moment that we were introduced to them, there is something, there's like, there's layers. There are definitely layers. There's a lot of mystery. You know, Adam Eve, I think is a really cool character, but I think like there's a lot more than meets the eye. And to me, that's kind of exciting because, you know, we, because we're so familiar with Marvel Comics and DC Comics and things like Titans and these sorts of other groups, I think what makes it exciting is like, cool, this is something new to discover. There are going to be secrets revealed that are probably gonna break some characters. There will be unexpected things that you probably would have never guessed would be happening in this story. And I think it also does a really good job of just teasing a lot of stuff, like Guardians of the Globe and all, just all these ideas and these concepts. And my comic book brain or my superhero brain can hear terms like that and I think of like, oh, is this like their Green Lantern Corps? Their Justice <laughs> right, League? Right, right, like, right. what is all this stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to discover what those things are and how different they are than what I am conceiving them to be in my mind strictly because it's a different comic book. Yeah, absolutely. There there you can see the similarities between other types of comic books in which uh, that's why I talked a little bit about like the common tropes that we see in other comic books, right? Um, and I, I do like because it gives I do like to see those those commonalities because it gives you something to really hold on to to where when things go crazy, you still have a base to like really as because as crazy as stuff gets sometimes you still have something solid that like i said goes throughout the book that you can really hold on to and it's all being seen right now like all of this adam is really good stuff that you're definitely going to remember and you 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 will do some callbacks you might even go back and reread a couple of sections in this first section just to win like the next couple, you know, the next yeah. couple volumes. <laughs> uh, I, I have to talk about this too. Adam, you mentioned it at the top, but like this comic book is not for kids. No. But it, it, I think even in this first volume, it does a good, like it's obviously going to get more intense and definitely gnarly. I think we all kind of know the Invincible comic book is also very violent, but it hasn't gotten to that level yet. Um, but even despite the violence, like it opens with a masturbation joke. Like it opens with his mom being like, you're gonna keep that up. You're gonna, you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. And that lets you know like, okay, they're gonna go to a little bit edgier places than, than you'll ever see in Marvel or DC, uh, which, which um, is, is on purpose. But it's not something that, the characters are still like good people trying to be, you know, it's not the boys. It's not right. trying to like, you know, it's not Watchmen. It's not doing that, but it still has these sort of jokes that are real and relatable. So I would say like teens could read it. I would say maybe as young as like 13, 14 could read it and, 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 and be fine and be into it. Um, and, and even appreciate a lot of the stuff that they're doing. And the other thing I didn't even realize at all until Adam started talking, is it like, I consider Invincible to be so much its own thing that I forgot that it is so similar to Superman and Smallville. And that's yeah. like an entry point for Adam because he, you know, he loves Smallville more than anybody that I know, the TV <laughs> show. So I'm like, right. oh shit, that's right, I forgot. Like, yeah. Smallville is gonna be this big way for Adam to connect to a lot of these ideas and these yeah. uh, and these characters. And it's true, it, it, it does that in the same way that Smallville took the Superman mythos and made like a teen drama. This is, this is, this is taking a lot of those tropes and, and cliches and things that we're familiar with. I mean, volume two, we're going to, spoiler, meet the Guardians of the Globe. 
and so many of them are modeled after the same way Omni Man is very much like a Superman type character. You're going to meet characters that are like maybe this person's modeled after Batman, maybe Wonder Woman, maybe Flash. It's great. So that I completely forgot, and 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 eventually I'll, I'll be curious to see how Adam thinks of this series later on because like I said it did turn into such an independent its own thing for me. I mean really quick you mentioned Smallville and you know the, the you just look at these the major arcing story of this first volume it's a it's a high school teacher you know it's a high school teacher who's had a son who's committed suicide who's then lost you know his wife or you know they've divorced from his wife and his life has just completely fallen apart and it's so interesting to me that this would kind of be the way you introduce the world, and I also love the fact that it's called Reginald Bell Johnson High School, like that's a great touch. There's a bunch of um, pop culture awareness and some meta stuff mm -hmm. that's happening that, yeah, uh, absolutely. That, that Kirkman and Corey Walker in this first volume as the artist mm -hmm. is able to give us. I, I really think this first issue is really smart and quick and I love the moment where he throws the burger yeah. and I love the moment yeah. where um, we'll even see that burger bag again, dude. That's what's crazy <laughs> yeah, about this exactly. comic book. No joke. I love the yeah, moment where so he- there's so many tie backs to where you're like, yep. wait, I remember that from like a year ago. Yeah, where yeah. he discovers he can fly and of course how he gets the name, his reaction on his face when his principal's like, you're not invincible, you know? And then when he's like, uh, I wouldn't try that. I'm invincible when he's holding up the, you know. Yep. That's a very Iron Man moment, actually. Secret identities also don't seem to be a priority in this universe as far as I can tell right now. You know, David yeah. Hiles, their professor, obviously like he knows who Adam, even Invincible are. And he even makes the remark of like, you're not even wearing a mask. Like, of course I'm gonna know who you are. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see worldwide in this universe, or at least as far wide as they go, to see whether or not secret identities are or are not a priority. Here's one I wanted to ask you guys, cause I'm curious about this. Cause I feel like it could honestly go either way. The moment where, and Adam, to your point, talking about secret identities, yes, that stuff does get explored and does get further expanded on. But I wanted to ask Adam Eve, Samantha Eve Wilkins, high school student in Mark's class. He recognizes her. They were in a class together the whole time. Do you think that there's chemistry here? Or do you think that Mark, when he was saying, you're a very attractive girl, that's why this bully guy was like being nice to you. Of course he was being nice to you. Was, was not trying to hit on her or come on to her or flirt, but like really trying to state a fact and it, it's kind of pl platonic. Because I could see either way, but I wanna get your guys' take on this first volume. I do like the way that they address it in the first volume. I think it's a fun way to leave some mystery. But I do think that there is a part of Mark that is like, he's trying to shoot his shot. He's, he's pining. He's <laughs> and he's pining a, little a little bit, bit of like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, you definitely feel that a little bit of that tension and that awkwardness. Yeah. And you can tell that he is one of those people, just like just like in Smallville with Clark, Clark and Lana. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he's always trying to shoot a shot, but very aware of like, oh, she has a boyfriend. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might get close to the edge, but I'm not gonna quite cross that boundary. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hilarious that everybody at the school is like, oh yeah, you guys are a couple, you're a thing. You're, and there, he's always like, no, we're not, we're not. She's not my girlfriend, yeah. she's not, we're yeah. just mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. um, but I am, I am very excited and curious to see how that develops, how much time they're gonna take to really develop that friendship even more so than the mm -hmm. relationship and whether or not it'll cross that boundary and how that will affect the whole team. It's very smartly written to where it's very believable and easy to grasp onto because we have those moments of realism of like, man, I've been there. It's confusing. Girls are confusing. Like, yeah, it's it's really fun and, and really exciting. And to me, this whole first uh, this first volume just screams potentiality, like straight up. This is a world that you a just lot got Hector so in. excited. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the true. potentiality of this world that is going to just suck you in and, and make you believe everything that's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. I, as far as that romantic or not romantic relationship, I also liked how they addressed it. I liked how Mark, when he said that thing, it could feel like he was shooting his shot, but it also could feel like he's just kind of stating a fact and he's at yeah. least trying to befriend Samantha because, hey man, they're both superheroes on the teen team. Like that's extracurricular. They're gonna, be, they should be friends. That's cool. Um, and then when she goes, you know, I have a boyfriend, right? Completely within her right to say that. And then he kind of does get shot down and go, oh, I, di I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way. But then later she addresses it. She goes, hey, listen, sorry if that was weird. Like I, I, maybe I misread it and he's like, it's cool, it's cool, let's not talk about it. And then they, and then there's, it's just awkward. But I, but I think that it felt like 
teenagers, you know, trying their best at being kind of just mature adults in the sense of like, look, I said this thing, apologies if it came across this way, no big deal. Um, I am attractive. No, you are attractive. That's a fact. Okay, well, we're just going to keep, you know, it, it, it felt like they were kind of awkwardly navigating that. Um, but that it, it wasn't like he said something really misogynistic or that she said right. something really yeah. mean or whatever. Like, right, it's not, right. it was not like a, like a super dramatic high school drama moment. It was like, hey, you know, I have a boyfriend, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't, mm, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> and then later we see uh, um, Rex Blode show up with Adam Eve and like kisses her on the cheek like oh that's awful babe see you later and it cu- it shows us Mark almost as like is Mark reacting or is he not reacting why mm-hmm. are they showing us yeah. Mark's yeah. face mm-hmm. is he like oh I don't like that or is he like okay that's cool yeah that's cool yeah. like mm-hmm. trying to bury something or is he just completely like yeah they're boyfriend girlfriend and these are my you know age group kind of friends and that's normal stuff it could go either way but I will say this I believe that there's a reason that Adam Eve if we're trying to go for this vein of classic superhero comics, uh, has red hair like Mary Jane Watson, who is like the pivotal sort of mm. major love interest character for Peter Parker, who I think Mark is also echoing in a lot of ways. I think there's a, there's a specific reason Adam Eve is a redheaded superhero character, which is like another trope. There's so many, all the redheads in fiction are all in superhero comics. Like every, Every redheaded woman in the Marvel Universe also has powers. Like, they, considering how many redheads are actually in a population, they all have powers. It's insane. Jean Grey, you know, Mary Jane, they're all there. Medusa from the Inhumans, everybody. Redheads are magical. This is they what they're trying are to say. Yeah. Magical and have powers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last thing before I think we can kind of wrap up. Adam, do you have a favorite character so far? Is it Mark? Is it Debbie Grayson? Is it Nolan? Is it Adam Eve? Or is it any of the other sort of side supporting characters? I'm pretty invested in Mark right now, uh, Invincible. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely really paying attention to his story the most and where it goes, what he learns about himself, what he learns about his family, his father and his father's past. Uh, I really like the quirky relationship he has with his parents as well. I I hope we get to see a lot more of that. They're and funny. Yeah, yeah, they're funny. They're humorous. I mean, the fact that the mom is like, oh good, you're home for dinner. I thought I was gonna eat dinner alone. And then literally without missing a beat, Omni-Man walks in after he's been trapped in another universe for like eight months. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah, just like, absolutely. yeah, this is business as and usual. Then, mm-hmm. And then Debbie does cry though. She yes. has that moment where she, what, what I love is that even with outrageous superhero rules, Debbie is the one to tell us, look, I can understand when he's captured in a jail. I can yeah. understand when a supervillain drains his powers, whatever bullshit craziness. <laughs> but she goes, whenever he's lost in another dimension, like it's yeah. happened before mm-hmm. where there's no communication, it's all cut off. She goes, that really stresses me out because it's mm-hmm. the not knowing. Yeah. So even that little tear of relief, it's like, oh, there's real drama still. There's still real it's human. stakes. Right, right, right. It's yeah. human, it's human. But yeah, when he describes later, like I spent the last eight months and finally the scientist resistance were able to bring me, she's like, that's nice, dear. That's nice. Like just going <laughs> no right into deal. it. Yeah, so I think that for me was that was probably the biggest thing. And I also just like, overall, I'm really just enjoying the artwork. And the artwork is continuing to just really enhance the experience. I personally, I just threw on Avengers Endgame because I didn't really know what to put on. Somehow, by some miracle, the music seemed to really match the tone. And that like really helped enhance the experience too. So I don't know if anybody else has any other music suggestions, but that really worked for me. That's a, that's actually a good question. We should ask that in the Discord and see if anybody has any suggestions. In the Discord, I threw in there, I said, because of volume one and its tone, and it's not quite gonna be the most intense, crazy thing yet, I said, Spider-Man Homecoming, Michael mm-hmm. Giacchino, this kind of like dun, 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 kind of light, you know, yeah. sort of yeah, teen yeah. superhero thing. Yeah. And that mostly worked for me too. I mean, the Vulture theme still had some, you know, dun, 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 <laughs> some dun, big dun, dun, moments, like, yeah. Right, so spooky, scary, big, booming moments, but it's mostly kind of, Teen drama for now, for now. But I like Avengers Endgame. Uh, if you, if anybody watching right now has any more suggestions, go hit us up on that Discord. Join that. The link is in the description below. If you've watched all of this and thought, I think I want to give this a shot and follow along with these boys, please do. We're going to give you links for how to read the comic digitally with Comixology or Comixology Unlimited. You can try the paperback, Family Matters. You can try the hardcover, which features the first three paperbacks in one, the Invincible Ultimate boy. Collection. Yeah. Thick Boy. You can also try, we're gonna put links in there for the compendiums and the complete library. And they're thick, thick, thick boys. Those are thick boys. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and subscribe so that you guys can follow us every single week and make sure that you hit all of the notifications all on so that when we do drop an Invincible video, you don't miss it, but we're doing one every week. Plus, like I said, stay tuned because we're gonna do bonus extra side stuff where Invincible pops up in different things and there's different tie-ins and different, I mean, Adam, Eve, and Invincible have a mini, or Adam, Eve, and Rexplode have a mini series. That, that I'm we looking can, forward to that. That, that That's we're good. gonna read at some point and it takes place before Eve and volume one. Yeah. So we're gonna get some background into those characters. So we we're, we are gonna do that, but it's not gonna be on this show, baby. It's gonna be on the side somewhere. So you have to follow <laughs> us, join our Discord. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Adam, for finally joining us on this journey. And we will see you guys next week with Invincible Volume 2, 8 is Enough. Read Volume 2 for next week, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.